Let me spoil the crimes of Quentin Devereaux, a sex addict, but for fires. Quentin was a faker who fooled Detective Donner with his sexiness. Is there a sexy faker fooling Detective Donner in the Edgar murder case? Quentin used his intimate knowledge of Leonard Ver to point all the clues to frame Leonard as the guilty arsonist. Did someone know of Grace's tea-cozy passion to frame her for Edgar's murder? Did someone know of the poisonous plants in Hannah's gardens to frame her? Quentin took off and disappeared into the wind. Was someone else looking to take off and disappear into the wind? Quentin would swear that Leonard wasn't guilty of arson when he himself had committed the crime. Is there a suspect swearing someone didn't kill Edgar when they killed Edgar themselves? Let's solve the After Party Season 2, Episode 6, Danner's Fire. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on the hunt to learn who killed Edgar the Groom and Roxanna the Lizard. Because this is a Danner episode, there won't be as many clues on the suspects, so we'll be breaking down their whereabouts on the day of the murder. If you haven't seen all 10 episodes, pause this video, go to Grandma's and suck on some Werther's Originals, and then come back after you've watched them. Use the timestamps below to jump to the topic or suspect you want to hear about and skip past the stuff you don't want to hear about. If you like the smacks, smack the like button on YouTube. If you like the wax, leave a comment below. If you like the smacks and the wax, subscribe. You can reach out to us on social media at Double PHQ. That's the word double, the single letter P for podcast, HQ for headquarters, at Double PHQ on Twitter, Instagram, threads, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. We want to hear from you. Before we get to the suspects, let's look at this week's bonus clue. Again, I've quit trying to solve these. Donner and Anique won't use the bonus clues to solve Edgar's murder, neither will we. This week, if you look at this messy food, it's actually in braille and it reads, not by a team. So Edgar and Roxana's killer was one person alone. Before we run down the suspects, let's look at our victims, Edgar and Roxana and see where they were on the day of the murder. We first see Edgar in the kitchen, about to do his morning laps. He's in his robe, EDM. After getting dressed, Edgar goes to his office for the final touches. There he sees Sebastian and sends him away so he can enter the safe. He opens the safe to get his cufflinks. Then Edgar gets married, vow box, wedding photos, first dance, leaves the first dance, goes to the house, catches Sebastian at the safe, plays Connect Four with Sebastian, returns to the reception tent with Roxana. He watches his mother's terrible speech, Zoe's interrupted speech, and Sebastian's speech. At 9.50, Edgar kicks everybody out of the reception tent. In the main house, Edgar's watch alarm goes off. We next see Grace giving him his drink in the library. After talking to his sister Hannah and being attacked by Travis, Edgar leaves with Grace up to his bedroom where he passes out. Now let's look at the suspects. Anique on the murder day. Even his story has a bit of an oddity. We won't go through his whole day. He already did that. Note, he originally tells Danner that he went and took a shower, then he entered the library for the after party. However, this moment of Hannah passing in front of him is not his first moment at the after party. He came in. He saw Grace putting the Adderall in the drink. He saw Grace hand the drink to Edgar. Has Anique been an unreliable narrator in other ways? Fang, the father of the bride. On the day of the murder, Fang says he needs to talk to the caterers, so he asks Zoe to pick up the relatives at the motel. Next, we're going to see Fang. He's dressed for the wedding. He meets Anique outside the house with the wine tourist and later with his relatives. Fang walks Grace up the aisle. He watches the wedding, takes the wedding photographs. He's with Vivian at the reception tent before the first dance. But note, once the first dance starts, Fang is nowhere to be seen. He's not seen during the speeches. The next time we see Fang, it's not until much later, at the after party, when he's playing Scrabble with Grace. Grace the Bride. On the wedding day, we first see Grace in her room with Zoe getting ready. Her mother-in-law comes in, wants her to sign the prenup. Grace doesn't. Zoe tells her she shouldn't get married. Grace gets upset. 
Grace gets married, she goes to the wedding photo, she has the first dance with Edgar, then when Ulysses. Grace is in the reception tent during the horrible speeches, and at 9.50 she's still in the tent when Edgar kicks everybody out. She goes to the house, puts in the drink, hands it to Edgar, then plays Scrabble with her father. Later, she escorts her husband to bed, puts Roxana in the cage. Where did Grace go then? Did she really spend the night in her wedding dress in the bed? Or did she leave to meet up with Hannah? Hannah Cornelia Minnows, the groom's sister, who, hey, forgot about this somehow, she's adopted. On the wedding day, Hannah's first moment is when she's shooting arrows and she talks to Ulysses. Later, she's going to meet with Travis. She goes to the wedding, wedding photos. After the wedding photos, she goes to her yurt and packs. And then there's once again a long period of time where we don't know where Hannah is. We see her next at the after party where she gives the G key to her brother. Isabel, the mother of the groom. Before we get to the murder day, we should mention that Isabel in this episode, as she speaks with Sebastian, tells him it has to happen now. She goes into the murder room. She sees the closet door open. She looks into it. Note in some tellings, the closet door is closed. Now, on the wedding day, Isabel is in the kitchen by the coffee maker. She mentions that Colonel is her late husband, Alexander's dog. She tells Anique to kick Colonel, then she disappears. Later, and there are two events which could happen, one before the other, I'm going to tell it that Isabel goes to Grace, gives her the hairpin, tells her to sign the prenup, and then takes an Adderall and leaves. Later, we see her once again. She's dressed for the wedding. She's bouncing on the trampoline. Now, Isabel has seemed relatively sane all this time, including walking down the aisle with Sebastian, telling him the name of her husband's horse. At the wedding photos, Edgar takes her purse and hands it to Anique. Now, we see her watching the first dance in Travis's telling. After Edgar has played his Connect Four game and returns to the reception tent, Isabel gets her purse back. After getting her purse back, her words are mumbled and deranged in her speech. Later, at the after party, though, Grace says she's nice. Sebastian Drapewood, the best man. In episode 6, he wasn't there to watch Travis's freakout. We hear Sebastian tell Isabel, it's all going smoothly. No hiccups yet. We'll get this done. Are they trying to unload the cryptocurrency before people know Edgar's dead? On the wedding day, Sebastian picks up the aunties and uncles and Jackson and Judson at the motel, drives them to the wedding. He meets Edgar in the office. Edgar sends him to get Anique. On the porch, he watches Edgar enter the code into the first safe. Sebastian finds Anique, brings him to the office. Sebastian hears the white chocolate chip talk, but then he leaves. He walks Isabel down the aisle, sees the wedding. He pitches a first dance to Grace. Once he's free of photos, Sebastian runs to the reception tent and takes Roxana. During the first dance, he goes to the office, breaks into the safe, gets caught, plays Connect Four with Edgar. Back in the reception tent, Sebastian listens to the speeches he gives his own. At 9.50, Sebastian is still in the reception tent, drinking when Edgar kicks everybody out. Sebastian is in the library at the bar when Grace slips Adderall into Edgar's drink. Travis Gladrise. Now, in episode 6, Travis microdosed the Devil's Trumpet. And we should note that the infamous hidden teapot is a teapot which Travis tried to knock over in episode 2. Now, at the wedding day, Travis is at the motel. He can't get a ride with Anique, so he takes a cab. Once out of the cab, he meets with Hannah. They plan to stop the wedding, but they don't. Travis is in the reception tent when the first dance begins, but he sneaks out following Edgar. Then he gets knocked out, and he is knocked out a long time, past 9.50, until the after party when he confronts Edgar. He follows Edgar and Grace to their bedroom. Then he falls asleep outside. Uncle Ulysses! In this episode, it sure seems like Uncle Ulysses leaves the bathroom without washing his hands and then makes the Dutch babies. Yuck! On the day of the wedding, Ulysses took a real long shower. Now, before that shower, or after that shower, or maybe during the period when everybody thought he was in the shower, Ulysses runs into Hannah and shoots arrows with her. He's there for the wedding, wedding photos. Ulysses completes the first dance with Grace. Ulysses is not there for the speeches. At 9.50, he hears Edgar kick everybody out of the reception, and he invites all of them, though none can come, to the after party in the library. He is at the bar in the library when Grace slips Adderall into Edgar's drink. 
Vivian, the mother of the bride. Vivian wasn't in episode six at all. On the day of the wedding, we don't really see her until the wedding and the wedding photos. She is with her husband at the reception tent before the first dance, and in Travis's telling, she watches the first dance next to Zoe, but her husband is not there. We don't see her during the speeches nor at 9.50. The next time we see Vivian is at the after party where she's changed outfits. In this episode, Zoe hides the teapot, the teapot with the tea cozy on it, in the bathroom. On the wedding day, Zoe goes to the kitchen with Anique for breakfast. She tells her father, Fang, that she can't pick up the relatives at the motel because she plans to help Grace get ready. She does help Grace get ready, and she tells Grace that she shouldn't marry Edgar. They get into a fight. Outside the library, Zoe meets Anique and tells him about what happened. Zoe is the maid of honor during the wedding. She's in the wedding photos. At the first dance, she watches it with her mother in Travis's telling. Sometime after the first dance, Zoe tries to talk to Grace and gets shot down. Zoe meets Anique by the white chocolate fountain. White chocolate. Edgar would have hated it. She listens to Isabel's speech. She gives one herself. She goes to the bar during Sebastian's speech, and then she leaves, and we don't see her again on the murder day. Today, before we get to feedback, we're going to get to a theory. But this theory, I'm going to use some feedback from somebody with the handle Happy Ad to set it up. So Happy Ad gave me this feedback. He said, why do some people think something was stolen from Isabel's purse? In the video, it looked like Isabel was looking at herself in the compact mirror that was in the purse when it dropped. She also had lipstick, a nail file, and a folded piece of paper that may have been the prescription Zoe found on Edgar. Why do people think something was stolen? Well, Happy Ad wrote that feedback, and the simple answer is, everything in the after party is deliberate. It was put into the show for a reason. Now, that reason could be multiple. It could be the purse fell because the showrunners wanted the audience to see what Isabel had in her purse. The second reason could be because Edgar was going to take something from the purse and he dropped it. The third reason is that falling purse is a bit of misdirection that Edgar was using to pull something on Anique. A bit like we saw the falling Connect Four piece distracted Edgar, which allowed Sebastian to take advantage of him and switch the baseball cards. I suppose I should mention it could also be the producers themselves trying to distract us from something. Note when Edgar drops the purse, Hannah and Isabel are having this interaction behind him. The final reason is it's a red herring. The showrunners want us to think about this fallen purse and get distracted on that rather than looking at real clues. And so again, everything in this show is deliberate. It was put in there for a reason. In episode one, we spent 55 seconds on white chocolate chips that Roxana eats and Edgar doesn't like. Why? 55 seconds is not too much time, but there's only so much time you have in an episode. To spend 55 seconds talking about white chocolate chips, it's got to pay off somehow, even if it is just a red herring. Why am I bringing these things up? Well, when Edgar was found dead, Isabel said, just like his father. The showrunners put that in for a reason. It may have been a red herring, but they put it in. So if Edgar's death has some sort of cosmic tie to Alexander Minow's death, how could Grace or Zoe's family have anything to do with Edgar's death? They had nothing to do with Alexander Minow's. That we know of, sure, there are plenty of episodes left we could find out, ooh, Uncle Ulysses was a business partner of Alexander Minnows. Yeah, we could find something out like that. But really, they don't have anything to do with Alexander Minnows. Neither does Travis. So doesn't that mean our suspects really are Hannah, Sebastian, and Isabel? This hasn't been brought up on the show. But again, if you stare at a computer screen and look at this article, it says Alexander Minnows died in a plane crash. Edgar is getting a pilot's license. These things are tied together somehow. It could just be a red herring, but it feels like all these things are tied together. The article implies that Alexander Minnows fell asleep while piloting a plane. Ding, ding, ding. Doesn't that make you think, well, gee, Edgar was getting his pilot's license. Is it possible somebody drugged Alexander Minnows and caused him to die in the plane crash? Once again, there would be only four suspects for that. There would be Isabel, Hannah, Edgar himself did it, or Sebastian. And now that Edgar's dead, you would assume that means Sebastian, Hannah, or Isabel are our only suspects, right? Now, admittedly, Alexander Minnows could completely be a red herring. But if he died in his sleep, just like Edgar did, 
I just don't see how it's a red herring. What do you guys think? Okay, now let's get to your feedback. Sarah wrote, I think it was Grace and Sebastian together. They had definitely the means and the motive. And I think Grace and Sebastian's are the one hiding the most. Alicia wrote, I'm in the camp of a bunch of people who killed Edgar and Roxana independently. The Lonely One wrote, My top suspects right now are Sebastian and Isabel or Sebastian and Hannah. When talking about the thing we highlighted last week of Isabel looking at something before the wedding photograph, Quincy wrote, I think Isabel was looking at Adderall. Remember in Grace's episode when she asked Grace about it and took one for herself. I think as a joke, Isabel's going to have an Adderall addiction. Satori wrote, I think Edgar did plan to fake his death and flee to Patagonia with the cash from his Ponzi scheme of a hedge fund in crypto. Hannah and Grace were already a couple and they agreed to help with a pretend marriage to make Edgar's disappearance look more real. Dominic wrote, Adderall actually delays the effects of the devil's trumpet. Also, I don't think Hannah was in love with Grace. Andre is really going off the board literally with his feedback. He said, Edgar mentioned Bao Bing just before he fell asleep, but could it be Bo Bing, which is a Chinese dice game? It would explain the dice on Edgar's desk. Jackie has a real fun theory. She wrote, I'm starting to wonder if Edgar tried to kill someone and accidentally poisoned himself and Roxana. Love it. Now, John's record collection has kind of the same theory we were talking about ours, where did somebody poison Alexander Minnows when he died in that plane crash? John wonders if Isabel or Edgar were involved in Alexander's death. We love this feedback. Please keep it coming. Keep hitting those likes. You'll unlock lots of crypto every time you hit a like on YouTube. Thank you so much. Next week, it's back. Episode 7. Let's solve the after party.